Well, hello and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is February 19th, 2021. And this is another episode of my Sew Your Stash series. And it is episode 13. And it's called Lincoln Logs Block. These are my Lincoln Logs Blocks. They measure 12 and a half inches right now because they are not sewn into a quilt, but they will finish at 12 inches. So I've been sewing my Lincoln Logs Blocks for a long time because as you know by now, I sew for my scraps and from my scrap baskets. So this block is a twist on the log cabin. So I called it the Lincoln Log because you kind of build it the same way as when you play with Lincoln Logs or you make a log cabin. So meaning the traditional block usually has a smaller square when it's a log cabin and then of course, all the strips will be different lengths as you go around and build upon that center square, but they are typically all the same width. In my Lincoln Logs blocks, these I'm using one and a half inch strips and two and a half inch strips in the same blocks. And that way I can use up a lot of my one and a half inch strips. Here's my one and a half inch strips basket. And I know that you've seen this really a lot fuller and I'm pretty excited that it's down to almost halfway. So I um, wanted to make this quilt again so that I could, you know, kind of get that down and my two and a half inch strips. I've made this quilt so many times. I think the one you saw hanging on the design wall in my opening video was probably like 12 years ago, but it's the perfect stash buster quilt. It's perfect for this series because I love it because I can use my one and a half inch strips, my two and a half inch strips, and because I'm cutting these center squares four and a half inches, then that means I can use either my bin right here, this, this is my four and a half and five inch squares. So you can use charm squares or five inch square stackers. And if you have leftover five inch charm squares like we always do, you can easily just put a four and a half inch ruler on there and cut around it to make it a four and a half inch square. And, or if you don't have a bunch of leftover squares, you can use your, here's, here's one of my uh, five inch strip baskets. I don't know if you can see that, but that's one of my five inch. Here's the other one. I can just take those and just, cut four and a half inch squares from there. But for this quilt, since I already have a pretty good variety of four and a half and five inch squares, I'm working from that bin. So that's the center square, four and a half inch. And then before I, um, let me just finish showing you my strips that I'm using. So I've showed you the one and a half. Now I've used the one and a half in both of these. This is block one and this is block two. I'll explain that in just a second. And then here's my two and a half inch bins. And they're they're pretty full, but they're getting down, but it seems like I'm always adding to my two and a half inch bins the most. And so that's why I love this block. So the reason that there's, this is block one and this is block two. So you start with the center square, the same size and then I always add at the top, but notice on block one, I start with one and a half inch strips and I surround this. And then in block two, I start with two and a half inch strips and surround it and then move on to one and a half. Block one, I do one and a half and then a two and a half inch round and then end with a one and a half. So it looks pretty cool when you sew them together. And when you sew them together, you don't need to worry about seams. You can like, you could turn that so that there's no seam if you wanted to, or you could turn it so that these two seams line up. It's not a big deal. I just like how they look like when they're sewn together. And I usually alternate block one and block two. And um, some of these use the same size of strips, even though they're in two different blocks. So I wrote down my cutting and let me just show it to you. So, so here's block one. Let me put this here so that you can get a screenshot. Let me get that whole thing in there. So if you're watching this on your phone, just take a screenshot so that you can 
either copy this on you know, your copy machine or you can write it down. If you're watching it on your uh, smart TV on the big screen or your iPad or something like that, you know, just take a screenshot or take a picture of your TV. Anyway, this is just an easy way for you to copy it down and that way you can get the measurements. So this is block one. As you can see, I've lettered every piece and written down how many of each one. So if it has a two in front of it, you need two of those. If it doesn't have anything in front of it, that means you only need one to make one 12 inch number one Lincoln Logs block. Okay, so here's number two. And that's the same thing. I have still labeled this A in the center because on both blocks it's the same. But I went ahead and finished the alphabet, meaning on block one, this one ended at J. So then I just started with K and went around here. So that all of these strips had different letters assigned to them so that when I was laying them out on my design board, you know, I could tell the difference of what was what. Okay, so here's one more paper. And what I did was, this is what I needed to cut out of my one and a half inch strip basket. And what I needed to cut out of my two and a half inch strip basket. And if I cut this many of each one of these sizes, that meant I can sew one number one block and one number two. That just kind of gives you an idea of you know, like you need several of the one and a half by ten and a half. You need three and four for both sizes. So you kind of know how many you need, you know, a lot more of as compared to others. You only need a few. And um, I just, when I start cutting, I just, I just grab my basket and start cutting a bunch of these measurements and then I label them. So how I label them on my design board is I use my So Handy stickers right here. And so this is, oh, let me put it down here flat. Can you see that whole thing? So here you can see these are A's. So here's a bunch of four and a half inch squares that are gonna be used for both blocks. So this is for the number one block right here. So this is B, C, D, H, I, J, but before and between those, here's the round E, F, G for the two and a half inch strips. And so I just kind of lay them out so that I I can kind of look on my paper or, I, you know, I go in alphabetical order. So I know if I just did an E, then I need to do an F type thing. And I'll explain that more as I'm showing you how I sew the blocks. Sounds like it's like a lot of complicated, you know, complicated cutting, but it really isn't um, because it's just the width of strips are the same. I just grab them and just chop off the length that I need and throw them on the pile according to the marking that I have here. So this is everything I need for number two, besides an A here that I grab. So that's how I have it set up. And so that's how I sew from them. And it is pretty handy to do it that way. And I just love these blocks. I love how I can just use any kind of fabrics, any style, I can use, you know, very vintage looking fabric, some vintage reproduction prints, and move into modern as well. This is just, you know, florals, stripes, dots, ginghams, whatever you have in your stash. You can even use light ones and then, um, excuse me, dark ones and then a few lighter. It doesn't matter. You can just mix or match. I normally don't use my background fabrics in here. I use um, just like all prints, but some with quite a bit. Maybe you might call that one a busy background, but I like how it all looks together. I like how it's all scrappy. And my advice when you're cutting your scraps is just to do a big variety of colors and um, then your blocks always turn out great. These blocks finish at 12 inches, like I say, and you can just keep sewing as many as you want and you know, till you have a twin size quilt or just a lap size or even a table runner or four of these can go together for a 24 inch pillow. It's really a great stash buster. Okay, I think I've chatted enough about the cutting 
And I hope I've explained that well enough. And let's go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a number one and a number two Lincoln Log block. Okay, so here I am at Miss Dolly and I have my Seam So Easy guide taped on with uh, my washi tape. There's one with pins on it. And um, I'm gonna be using the quarter inch seam allowance when I sew these on. And I don't like to use a scant for those of you who have asked quarter inch seam, seam allowance. I like to use an accurate one. So if you're one that likes to use a scant, you can follow the inside of this line, but I like to follow right on this line right here when I do my quarter inch seam. And so this is the Lincoln Logs block number one. So what we're gonna do is start out with a four and a half inch square. And here's my A. Let's see, I've done that color. I think I, I wanna do, I wanna do a red. So I got these out of my basket and I like to just go like this right before I sew just to make sure, yeah, that's four and a half inches all right. And not just assume it's exactly four and a half inches, but um, most of the time it is. Very rarely do I have a problem with that. Okay, so what I like to do with my blocks is start the strip on the top right here. So the first thing I need to do is go to my B pile right here and pick one of these to add to the top. So what I do is I just try to pick one that is not the same color. That's a nice good contrast and that's all I do. I just grab one and when I say to the top obviously I'm going to sew it to the side here but then when we turn it it's going to be at the top. And again just run it through my machine. Now normally I would be probably sewing three or four of these block number ones at the same time. But for filming, I just want to show you how to do one block. So I'm using my scrappy strips in between to save on thread and to save on time. So with each strip, I just go over here, set my seam real quick, and just press it away from the center square. All of these are going to be pressed away from the center square. Now the next step I want to do is I'm going to add here. So I'm always going to be adding, turning my block, rotating it to the left, and that's where I add my next strip. So I added this one, so it's time to put something on the left. So that is the next strip size, which is C, which is a five and a half inch, one and a half by five and a half. And so I'm just going to pick something that maybe, why not? Why not do that orange gingham? And then I just simply lay it on the top here, line them up, and start adding. Okay, so I think you get the idea of this because I don't really like talking over my machine. I'm just going to continue sewing, always rotating it after pressing and adding to the left, and I'm just going to have you watch me probably speed up the process a little bit. And just as a side note, for those of you, when I speed up the video, if you want to see it slower, I don't know if you realize this, but you can watch it in slow motion. So you could slow it down if you really wanted to, if you think I'm going a little bit too fast, but I don't really think you need to sew, watch me sew the block in real time. So, because especially what is repetitive is this. So again, I just set the seam, press it, and now I'm always going to add to the left. So I need the same size strip again for that one. So I'm going to repeat two in a row the same size. And I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing. Okay, so for block number one, you know that now that you have one round of one and a half inch strips, then it's time to add the two and a half inch strips. So this is the top. This is the last one I added. And you can tell that because there's no seams. 
So this was, you know, I did this one first, second, third, and fourth, and now it's time for me to add the two and a half inch strip at the top. So that's E. And let's see. I haven't used the brown yet, so let's add that next. And I'm just going to continue on now and go ahead and do a round of the two and a half inch strips and then I'll go ahead and end with one and a half inch strips. Okay, so here we have block number one finished. It will finish at 12 inches when it's sewn into your quilt, and right now it should measure 12 and a half inches. Now, I did want to tell you something that I'll probably get questions about, so I'm going to try to answer that right now. So sometimes when you're sewing a scrappy block like this where you're adding rounds, a lot of times a lot of people will just take a whole long strip and just add it around and trim as you go, meaning like it's longer than it's supposed to be and then you just stop and trim it at the end. I don't like to do that for two reasons. One, I think it takes um, too much time when I could just sit and cut out of my my scraps, you know, for a couple hours and, uh, you know, put on a movie and do some cutting and then have a big pile of scraps that I can sew with. But really the main reason is because I think it makes the block wonky. This way I have cut the lengths that I need and so I know that they're supposed to fit. And so that tells me when I'm making a mistake or if I'm not making a mistake, I really like how that is. For instance, this, this last piece, you know, I could pick up a pile that I thought was correct and go to lay it on and realize that that was wrong because it was too short. So I like having them cut the exact same way. And if you uh, sew your, sorry, if you keep your scraps like I do in baskets, I love that they're already one and a half inches wide, two and a half inches wide, and all you have to do is chop them off at the ends to cut the correct lengths. But I really love how that looks. I love that I have newer fabrics in there. I think this is uh, a newer one and some really old ones in there. I love that one. This is one of my favorite prints from um, my friend Pam from Pam Kitty Morning. She did um, this, this as part of one of her fabric collections. And I love making scrappy quilts because it just takes me down, uh, you know, memory lane. And I just love how they look. So here is block one. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew a block two, which is, let's see, let me grab this. So here's block two. And you can see that block two starts with the four and a half inch square, but then with the two and a half inch strips. And then I do two one and a half inch strips on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that in the exact same way. I'm just going to um, do some happy sewing a little bit sped up for you and let's get going. All right, so I've got my block number two set up here so I can have that as a model. And I just need to pick 
think I don't think I've done a green center yet so let's start with that and that means I need to pick okay any of those will work why not why not do the top one or I don't know let's do this red one I'm going to stop right here and talk about this for a second because see how you can see that there's a little bit of green left over here. All you have to do is measure six and a half is grab your ruler every once in a while this happens and see which one is correct. So can you see that measurement right there? I've lined it up right there and I can see that it's correct that the green one is correct. So the blue is a little bit short. So when you go to add that seam, you can just compensate a little bit. These are very forgiving blocks, so it's really not gonna make that much of a difference, but I just wanted to show you what you need to do, you know, when that happens and how you can correct that. And you can kind of see that here. Let me stick this on a design board so you know what I'm talking about. So visually, you can see that it kind of is a little bit short in there. So when I go to add this next strip, let me let me pick one and I'll show you what I'm what I'm gonna do. Okay, so let me grab the color. Oh, that's the wrong size strip. I can't grab that one. Forgot I need to do one out of the same size. Okay, so here's a yellow one. So when I go to lay that there, I know that this green is correct. So I'm gonna lay that right there. And it's going to hang over just a little bit from this blue because I know that this blue goes under a little bit. And I'm going to just pay attention to my yellow, ignore the blue and the green underneath it because they're lined up correctly. And at this point, I usually don't pin as you can see, but at this point, you know, you could if you wanted to just to keep that in place and make sure that it's not going to, you know, go anywhere. Okay, back onto my regular sewing. All right, well, here's block number two. And I did wanna um, tell you that when you're pressing, you wanna make sure to kind of use the side of the iron and not just the tip so that you get all of these pressed all the way back and you don't have any folds. And that will keep your block accurate as well. So let's go back over here. Here's another block two of the Lincoln Logs block. 
you know, I could sell these blocks all day. I just think they're so fun. And as you can see, I have, oh, whoops, I have a little strip catastrophe over here. But as you can see, I have plenty of strips and all sizes to keep me sewing for a while. And see all those fun strips? So this is how I like to sew. I usually take a day and cut a bunch, and then I like to... Like you can see my view here from the sewing room. You can see my TV right now. I've got just got a fire on it so that, um, you know, there's no noise going. But I turn a movie on and I just sew and um, it's just therapeutic. It's calming. I love it. I love playing with my scraps. I love keeping my scraps this way, saving them, using leftovers, making something beautiful out of my leftovers and uh, relaxing while I'm doing it. So one of the things that I've been watching right now is I rewatch this every couple of years and it's on, you can get it on Prime Video right now or Hulu, I think. I think you can get it on both, but it's um, Lark Rise to Candle, Candleford and it's one of my favorite series. So again, Lark Rise to Candleford, if you're looking for something good to watch or rewatch, that's a great one. And so I hope you would enjoyed sewing with my stash. Um, today and with me in my sewing room and I will chat with you later.